Amen. Thank God for another day. Thank God for grace and for mercy. Um, we're going to continue our study in the book of Romans. Tonight we are going to pick up with Romans chapter 11, but we're going to read the last two verses of chapter 10 just because um, this is a letter that Paul was writing and so he didn't have chapters necessarily in his letter. And so to pick up right at verse 1 of chapter 11, we need to go back just a little to refresh what uh, Minister Arthur taught us last week, and then we will continue on. Um, I'm reading out of the Amplified Classic, and I'm going to start with Romans chapter 10, verses... Uh, what is going to happen to my phone? 20 and 21. Okay. Then Isaiah is so bold as to say, I have been found by those who did not seek me. I have shown, revealed myself to those who did not consciously ask for me. But of Israel, he says, all day long I have stretched out my hands to a people unyielding and disobedient and self-willed, to a fault-finding contrary and contradicting people. Now we're going to pick up with verse 1 where he's, Paul then says, I ask then, has God totally rejected and disowned his people? Of course not. Why, I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of, Jer of Benjamin. Verse 2, no, God has not rejected and disowned his people whose destiny he had marked out and appointed and foreknown from the beginning. Do you not know what the scripture says of Elijah, how he pleads with God against Israel? So we're going to pick up right here where we've been talking about and learning that Paul is talking to a group of people who he wants to understand that salvation belongs to anyone who will receive it. Mm -hmm. He wants them to get in their hearts and mind that it is nothing that they can work for and there's nothing that they can earn. Um, this is God's free gift. And so the ending of the last chapter just lets us know that <clears throat> he was quoting um, scripture and he said, uh, God said of Israel all day long, I have stretched out my hands to a people who are unyielding and disobedient and self-willed, contrary to what I wanted to do. And so then Paul says, so has God totally and, re and completely rejected and disowned his people? Is this something that a God who says his hands are outstretched towards people, is this possible that he could have gotten to a place where he completely and totally rejected? Uh, and he said, of course not. Mm -hmm. How can he be so sure? Paul says, I'm going to tell you how I can be so sure. I'm an Israelite. Mm -hmm. And I'm saved. <laughs> I told you, the, the you know, the account of me getting this the meeting with, with Jesus on the road to Damascus and my name being changed. You know that who I was before, how I was persecuting the saints. And now I am the author of this letter to you telling you, hey... <clears throat> There's a way that you can receive what God has for you. And that way is through salvation. So he's saying here, it is not a universal rejection. So this is what we need to understand. There are some people who are not going to receive. Paul was saying, okay, let me, let me break it down for you now. I'm, he didn't totally and completely reject. No. But there are some Jews who have embraced the gospel. He said, I'm one, I'm one of those. So I'm not rejected. I, I'm not one of the ones who doesn't believe. And the duration of this rejection is not final. Meaning if they would, but turn, they can come to, if you would understand that you, we are not, um, as Jews, he was saying, we are not the ones who own this salvation. If we would understand that it's God's to give to whomever he wants, and we repent, we can come and get it. Still today, any Jew that wants to, that that receives God will and will say, man, I've been thinking about this wrong. I, I need to repent and receive this salvation. I need to acknowledge that Jesus is not just a good teacher. I need to realize and acknowledge that he is the Messiah, that he is Savior and Lord. 
they can come too. Mm -hmm. he, he, he wants them to understand it's not final and it's not universal. There are some Jews who believe wholeheartedly that Jesus is the son of God who have received him and who live life as a full fledged believer. And what Paul wanted them to understand and to convince them of is no, God didn't, didn't disown his own people. Verse two, he says, he had their destiny marked out and appointed, and he knew from the beginning what was going to happen. He knew how this was going to go. He knew that there would be some of us who would say, I'm going to receive, I'm going to believe, just the same way he knew there would be so many who wouldn't. But that didn't stop him from reaching his hand out and trying to make sure that everyone who could know did know that he was available to them. He says, that God foreknew from the beginning. This is how we can, t this um, references how before the foundation of the earth, the lamb was slain. Before anything ever happened, God had already purposed. God knew what was going to happen. We, things to catch us by surprise. We, the, the Jews that Paul was talking to, they were surprised about what you mean these Gentiles can be saved? What do you mean that we can do this without works? What do you mean that we don't have to do this by the law anymore? They were surprised. God wasn't surprised. It was his plan. It was his way to get us back to him in the first place. So things may catch us by surprise, but God is not surprised. This was his plan, his purpose, his vision. This is what he knew would need to happen before he made Adam and Eve. He knew that there would need to be a savior. He knew that there would have to be holy bloodshed that would cover and redeem us from sin. Does anybody have anything on those first two verses of chapter 11? Yes, I, I wanted to touch um, this as well because I was thinking how Sometimes we misread God's chastisement mm -hmm. to make us ask questions like, has God rejected his people? Because he sent his people into captivity. Mm -hmm. he, he raised up a nation purposely to send his people into captivity. But he also told them, I know the thoughts and the plans that I have towards you. They're not evil. Mm -hmm. It looks like it's evil because I let somebody take you into captivity. Mm -hmm. But but uh, that's not my thoughts about. That's not my end thought about. My thoughts is to give you an expected end. So sometimes the chastisement of God um, on a mass scale. If 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 people are not careful, um, people could have came out of COVID saying or uh, went into COVID saying. Do God love us? Is God judging everybody? You know, because it seemed like it was everywhere. Mm -hmm. Okay. But the thing is, is that he chasing those whom he love. And, and so it's not rejection. Mm -hmm. It's, it's a, it's an act of love that will help us get to the place where we need to be um, and, and as you was talking about, Paul is saying, I'm an Israelite. I was thinking also, he also referenced that a descendant of Abraham. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, if y'all don't know anybody else, see, see whenever they, Abraham. whenever they talk about Abraham, mm -hmm. it's like how we, how you all talk about your grandmama and you know, all of this stuff. My grandmama told me, mm -hmm. okay, Abraham was that type of person mm -hmm. to them, but not only Abraham, Jesus himself mm -hmm. was a Jew, mm -hmm. a Jewish person. And so, no, he has not rejected um, his own people because that would be rejecting yeah. himself. And what also comes to mind is that while so often we get stuck on what the consequence is, what we need to focus on is that we are here to experience the consequence, which means I have an opportunity mm -hmm. because when we don't have opportunity, what's the consequence? Like, what can you do to a dead person? Uh, nothing. It, there's nothing that will help them. There's nothing that will hurt them. They're dead. But when God is giving or dealing with us in a way that we have to um, say, man, that's that feels that's rough for God. That's strong. That's firm. What we should say, as opposed to does he love me? 
at least he gave me a chance because he could rightfully he could have cut me off. Mm -hmm. Rightfully, he could have said, okay, I am done. He could have said so because how many times have we read through the account of the Israelites and how many times have they failed God? How many times did they go into captivity? How many times did he say, all right, y'all want, y'all, I keep telling y'all don't choose these other gods. I keep telling you don't marry these other women. I keep telling you to leave this stuff alone. But, and so God could have rightfully at any point, this is also what we have to remember at any point that God chooses that we have reached the point where he's not going to strive with us anymore. He's well within his rights, yep. well within them. So the fact that that shouldn't be our concern, we don't need to focus on, Oh, he must, this consequence is too hard. And it, thank God he's just given me a consequence because it could be fatal. It could be final and I could not come out of it. So that's one of the things that um, was impressed on me when I was studying. God, I thank you that even with this consequence, you don't take it all the way to the, to the way, the far end that you could take it. You left some mercy in there. And this is what Paul wants them to see. It's not final to the point where they can't come. It's not final to the point where those that are among the, the people that he's writing to, that they can turn and decide, man, I need to make a better choice. Minister Arthur, I see your hand. Yeah. Um, you know, as you were talking, uh, one of the things that impressed upon me was, you know, I thank God for the fact that he made provision for us because of Israelites uh, hard-headedness you know because the Israelites were God's chosen people you know before the foundation of the earth he, that was his people but when they started being disobedient they were doing all that stuff he extended that to us for me and you to be saved you know so imagine as I was reading I was I was you know I was thinking man so imagine if um, he chose the Israelites and these were his people, everybody, what about everybody else? If Israelites were doing the right thing, were following God, doing everything they're supposed to do, these are his chosen people. If you're not a Jew, you wouldn't be your God. But because of their disobedience, their grace was extended to all of us. That if we believe in the gift, Jesus Christ, that he sent on to this earth, to, to share his blood for all of us, I wouldn't be, be saved, be, be adopted into his, um, his sonship. So I thank God for the fact that that was extended to all of us. Because I'm a Gentile, you know, we the Gentile were extended to all the Gentiles, even those who are not Jew were able to, the non-Jews were able to believe without even seeing and having faith and trust in Jesus Christ to be saved, um, to be adopted into his kingdom. Amen. Amen. When I was studying, what I, I thought of it in this way, that if this is the result that we get when they were disobedient, what would have happened if they weren't? Because it, it was God's desire that all would come to repentance mm -hmm. and that all would be saved. So if this is what we get, if we get redemption, if we get heaven, if we get the Holy Spirit, if we get all this from them doing wrong, what would we have gotten if they had done right? How much more mm -hmm. would have been added to us? I was sitting thinking, I'm like, what else could it be? I mean, we now we get heaven. Now we get Jesus. Now we get the, the Holy Spirit. And all of this came as a result of them being disobedient. What if they had stayed? And, and what way would God have used to make sure that we got it? Because he wouldn't, he wouldn't go leave us out. So I just wonder how much more, how much that of that exceeding abundantly would we have seen? Because my mind gets blown every time I think about, man, God could have really let me die in my sin, but he didn't. So, and that's a result of them doing the wrong thing. He used that to bring us in. He was going to bring us in. He would have found a way. But what I was thinking, man, what could have been better? What? Could have been more. What would we have received more than this, Mom? So you remember in the Old Testament, like with Naomi and Ruth, the foreigners, he said if they 
even when they believed and and and, and did what the the Jews mm -hmm, did, mm -hmm. he 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 said, "Don't cast them out." Right. When she said, "Your God is going to be my mm -hmm, God," mm -hmm. he he God accepted them. Mm -hmm. So his we can see from that that his his intention was always mm -hmm. whoever would would want to serve him, whoever would say yes to him and follow him, he would in no wise cast out. Right. Even before. Paul, even before mm -hmm. he, he did that. And so this just goes to help me with when we were talking about um, last week. Man, God's intention, there is nobody, nobody can beat God at an intentional plan. <laughs> nobody mm -hmm. can beat God at all of the layers and levels of how this thing played out because this is one thing that we do know god doesn't fail so sh if the israelites had decided nah i'm gonna stay i'm not going to reject them i'm not going into captivity no more i'm not god would have had a way and so whichever way it was i'm just thankful that he had one and that i heard i heard his voice and i decided to stop bucking the program and just say all right, just like Minister Arthur, thank you, Lord. I thank you, because I would have been a mess, Mom. Yeah, he used the Jews for uh, what he used, and he's using he used the Gentiles for the Jews. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. the, their their shortcomings and, and failures. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the interest, intricacies of God, He always had a way out for all of us mm -hmm. that would say yes to Him. And this just further proves out that. When we love them and are called according to his purpose, all things go work for the good. Yeah. It's okay, it's the Gentiles, but guess what? This just goes to show you that you can come. Mm -hmm. If you were my chosen and now they were not the initial chosen, there's a this cycle, this thing going round and round. Mm -hmm. God had a way, as the songs say, that we can't go over, under, or get around. Wow. It it just works and so that is mind blowing minister Arthur, i see your hand yeah um another thing that came to mind was um you know when 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 god said you know um i'll make them i'll make a nation who are no nation you know to make the israelites jealous you know because the Jew israelites believed that they were the chosen people right and i believe that what god did for us, the Gentiles drew some of the um, Jews to him. You know, yes, yeah, some of them were jealous. His plan worked, you know, and some were converted. You know, you know, as we, we continue to read when um, Isaiah, when when Jezebel was chasing Isaiah, um, Isaiah the prophet, and he said, oh, they have killed all your prophet. And God said, listen. I have reserved over 7,000, not all of them. You're not the only one. You know, they are still being converted. You know, these Jews are still being converted. And the majority, God just saying, you know, even at the end of verse 10, I heard up my hand that when they change their mind, when they come to me, I'll receive them. Amen. Amen. I was thinking about the plan of God never changed. Mm-hmm. It never changed. God didn't respond to the disobedient right. Amen. Israelites. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Remember the scriptures say there was a remnant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so we're not saved because of what the ones who rejected mm -hmm. him. Mm -hmm. We're saved because that was his plan. It was his plan. Mm -hmm. And those who remain, that remnant that remain, mm -hmm. they did their part. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they spread. Now, it could have been faster, mm -hmm. if you will. It could have been spread more, if you will. Um, but those who remain faithful, we're, we're not recipients of those who rejected, I'm mm -hmm. saying. Mm -hmm. But we're recipients because God's plan never failed. The remnant came through for God. Mm -hmm. And and we are here today. And I'm and I'm grateful to know that, like Gideon, it don't take all 
3,200 or 32,000, however many it was, it it can get down to the remnant level Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and accomplish God's plan Mm -hmm. for our lives. So I I just wanted to expound on that because I think sometimes we think of ourselves as an afterthought Mm. in God's plan. Like if it had not been for them Mm. messing up, Mm Versus the glass being half full. Mm -hmm. If it had not been for that remnant Mm -hmm. that God could count on, Mm -hmm. this is why that message was spread. Mm -hmm. But whether all of it would have went the other way or not, Mm -hmm. we was already Mm -hmm. a forethought. Mm -hmm. And that's the part that is encouraging. We are living out something that God already lived out. Mm -hmm. This this is not something Mm -hmm. that you know, he's going through like, let's see what the end is going to be. Nah, he knows the end. He knows every single step. And this is what helps us to be, should help us be able to trust him that much more because he's done this already. And he's just, and he's confident enough to say, I'm going to come back and go back through it with you. Verse three says this. Lord, they have killed your prophets. They have demolished your altars, and I I alone am left, Mm -hmm. and they seek my life. Verse 4, but what is God's reply to him? I have kept for myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to Baal. This is in 1 Kings chapter 19. So too at the present time there is a remnant, a small believing minority selected by God's grace, his unmerited favor and graciousness. Listen. This goes to show us the importance of being a remnant. Mm -hmm. We have a part to play where it looks like the world is louder, where it looks like, man, who is serving God? Where it looks like people who have platforms and large followings and huge churches, some of the things that they're saying, it it can make you feel like, well, God, who in the world, besides the folks that I know are saved, where are they? God said, hold on. This is the part that helped me. He said, I have kept for myself. They for you, Elijah, you don't see him because you need to just be mindful that you do your part. Mm-hmm. And he, because Elijah said, I'm, I'm the only one and they want to kill me. God said, let me tell you something about what I have done. Elijah, I have the plan. <laughs> I have kept for me 7,000. That you don't know nothing about. When we look up and we feel like, man, how are we going to further this gospel? Because sometimes if we're honest, this thing feels daunting. It can feel like how many more people are there that don't believe than there are that do. And the ones that we thought believed all this time, now they open their mouth and we're like, well, what do you believe? Because I thought we were believing the same thing. What we need to see is God keeps a remnant, it, and, and it's not for us. We can benefit from it, yes. But he said, I kept for myself. For, for them to be able to do their part, to reach those that are in their circle of influence, for those who have not bowed to Baal, those who are saying, no, I'm not going to bow. You may not ever see them, y'all. We may not ever see people in um, Kuala Lumpur or Argentina. There are people that God has kept for himself and they're not bowing either. This is why it's so important that when we pray, we pray for our brothers and sisters that we don't see and that we don't know, that ones that don't look like us or sound like us because God has kept the remnant. There's a job for the remnant to do. He said, Paul said that there at the present time there's a remnant. He says, "Well, don't don't get beside yourself and think that the y'all that I'm right to are the only ones." No. There are many that God has kept to himself to pr- continue to compel men and women to come who are living a life of holiness, who are seeking him and and learning of him and not bringing a reproach to his name. God says, "Listen, I got a plan." Mm-hmm. <laughs> y'all Y'all are a piece. Remember the Bible talks about the body of Christ. You might be a part of the fingernail. And then there's some legs somewhere and an arm somewhere and an elbow somewhere. We have a place, but never let us think like Elijah or even like some of us feel. God, who else can help? God said, well, I have 
I have kept a people unto myself. You, Andre? Yeah, I, I was thinking about how fear brings about irrational thinking. Mm-hmm. And if I'm not mistaken, I think this is the same story where um, this fellow is running from Jezebel. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He's scared. Mm-hmm. He said they want to kill him. And 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 so him being scared. Uh-huh. I, now he just did a mighty act. Yes. Too. Mm-hmm. And now yes. this woman Caught out um, almost if if she got something on him mm-hmm. that he be- really believed that she gonna do all this stuff that she's saying. Mm-hmm. He make an irrational statement mm-hmm. to God, mm-hmm. who just helped him mm-hmm. yes. <laughs> prove a point. That was in a situation <laughs> that that just helped him mm-hmm. have victory. Mm-hmm. Now he's saying he's the only one. Okay, well, if you can do all of that being the, the only, only one, one. That, that's even more courage you, you should have. Mm-hmm. And, and so fear brings about irrational thinking. And then I was thinking also about um, we, we can't see everything everywhere. And a lot of times we start to say, man, people ain't getting saved like they used to. People ain't serving the Lord like they used to. Well, that's that's in our circle. Yes. Mm-hmm. If five of us coming together <laughs> for two and three years mm-hmm. and we ain't talk to nobody, mm-hmm. okay, then the, the, all we know is ain't nobody getting saved. <laughs> but we don't know. Mm-hmm. We're only speaking from our little sampling pot. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and the truth is, folks are being saved everywhere. The problem is, I think, with, with Christians, with us that say we believe is, we don't believe God cares about culture. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So when we see people yeah. live for God, in their culture, yes. Uh-huh. yes, we have issues with that. Yes, yep, yes. yes. And, and, and 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 this is why when we read the scripture, we'd be like, "Man, I don't know how in the world <laughs> God can say David was a man after mm-hmm. his own heart, mm-hmm. and Abraham did this and that and that." Mm-hmm. When the scriptures say the the culture of that time was yep. they can have multiple wives, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so. So God didn't disqualify them mm-hmm. for because of their culture. Now he dealt with their sin. Right. Mm-hmm. But we have issues if they don't do it like the us. American way. This is why we can have the army in Germany <laughs> and only have Americans in our church. Yep. Mm-hmm. Because we can we have issues mm-hmm. with Mm-hmm. <laughs> the Germans that don't do it our way, mm-hmm. or the the the, the, the yeah. folks in mm-hmm. Korea or Japan that don't do it, mm-hmm. we think that we got we the think that we Israel. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and 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 the truth is, we got to learn how to embrace. And 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 Minister Arthur is from Africa. Mm-hmm. Okay, he's born and raised. I don't know if he raised born and raised there, mm-hmm. but the thing is, if some of us none. Bo- uh, African. Yes, yeah. go to Africa. <laughs> yes. We will probably come back and say, man, is any of them say because when it comes down to dancing, they, um, dance. they dance ain't yes, gonna be I like ain't gonna look like ours. That's right. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um in church. Mm-hmm. It ain't it ain't gonna look like ours. Mm-hmm. It, 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 it's gonna be like come on now. It don't take all that. <laughs> and God is saying well, why not? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Minister Arthur. Um. Yes. Um, I want to come from a different angle too now. Um, so for instance, I mean, we talk about even the churches, the different denominations in the United States or even all over the world, right? We have different, different denominations. We all believe and do same things, have different uh, philosophies and theology, you know, and but the common denominator is that we all believe in Jesus Christ. Now, I say that very, very carefully because, again, uh, I'm talking about Christian that believe in Jesus Christ, but the church that preach Jesus and the crucify um, the cross, right? We have different different denominations. 
you know, but yet everybody have different way of serving God or reaching other folks. So we got to be very careful how we think sometimes we think that we are better than other churches because the common denominator is Jesus Christ and him crucified and the cross. So uh, that's one of the things also I've learned that, you know, just because these, this other church believe that, you know, um, a woman can wear pants, but they preach the word and they preach the word of God doesn't mean that it's to make them a bad church, you know? So we got to be very, I have learned that. And, and that's one of the things that, you know, I, I'm, I'm looking cause you cannot always think that you, the, the, the church that you're going to is better than that church. Or even you as a, a child of God, as a Christian, you are better than the other person. Because I would say, take the 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 uh, the beam out of your eye before you try to you know trying to talk about somebody speck in somebody's eye, you know. Because all of us, if the truth be told, God look at us and He can sh look at the the worst of us. The, the 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 you know can can if God can can show us our shame. You know, we can see a whole lot of things and we won't be looking at other people differently. Amen. So. Exactly. That's the truth. Ma, you had your hand? Yes. I just wanted to say at this, it, sound, it sounds like God is saying that he made them. He, he, he saved unto himself a remnant. Mm -hmm. But I don't think he, it's not that he took away their choice and oh, no. made them robots. Mm -mm. It's just that, just like with us and like with Job, like with those that you would think, man, they, I mean, everything that happened to Job or to different ones, you would think, I, I understand, I would understand if, if, just like with his wife. She shouldn't have. There's no reason. But but with everything she saw, sometimes you can say, well, God, I mean, that's a lot mm -hmm. for, for somebody. Mm -hmm. But I but I like what the song that says. Um, um, my good days outweigh my bad mm -hmm. days. Mm -hmm. It's just that God has been so good to us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when things happen, he's still been better to mm -hmm. me than anybody else mm -hmm. and so he he's loved us so much that there's there's always just going to be somebody to serve him mm -hmm. somebody mm -hmm. is going to say yes to god like you're saying somewhere around this world that's how good god is mm -hmm. and so it's not that he he's made anybody mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just that he truly is love, and you get that. Just like with some of your children, you can you can raise them the exactly the same in the same household. Some will love you, and some will will just just declare that you were the worst that there is. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and you've done your best. Mm -hmm. And this is why it's so important that we mind what's our business, the planting and the watering. We want to mind God's increase so bad. We want to be able to prove this and that. And all of that stems from a place where I want to be right. Mm -hmm. I, but the, this is why God said, I know your heart. I see your thoughts coming towards me. I know them before they get to you to think. And this is why it's important that we submit ourselves to God and that we crucify this flesh and that we um, just do our part. I have a quick little testimony. I had gotten discouraged with my Empower stuff and I was praying and I was like, God, what, what do you want me to do? But I did uh, a live on Monday night and there was a lady who somebody had shared it in a, a business group that I was in. And this lady was in, which is the reason why I said Kuala Lumpur. This lady yeah, messaged me <laughs> because this lady messaged me from Kuala Lumpur and said, let me tell you, sister, how this, this, what you just talked about is exactly what I was praying and asking God for. So I don't care who else don't get it. Oh, I'm going to try not to cry. I don't care who else don't get it. You're doing God's work. Mm -hmm. And this is the part 
that we have to remember, y'all. We can't see everybody. It's not for us to see this remnant that God has. Just do what he told you to do. It doesn't matter that we can't chase down every person and say, hey, you serving him? Hey, did I tell you serving him because of me? Did I water? Did I plant? This is the stuff we get trapped and, and bogged down in. God said, just do what I told you to do. And this is what Peter, I mean, Paul, Peter, this is what Paul is saying here. He says, so too at the present time. There's still a remnant. Mm -hmm. You can be as mad as you want to be about these Gentiles and about I'm telling you it's by grace. God still has a remnant and he's going to use those who will be used by him. So quick plug for God. Just do what he told you to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and don't worry about how. There are people in my own family who don't care nothing about what I'm doing. But a lady in Kuala Lumpur decided she was going to message me. Amen. And she pushed me so just from that message. And so I just thank God for that because we're doing what when we do what mm -hmm. he say do. The rest of it ain't our business. Just keep going. And so that message that he has in verse 5, so too at the present time, there's a remnant, a small believing minority selected by grace, by God's unmerited favor and graciousness. Verse 6 says, but if it is by grace, it is no longer conditioned on works or anything men have done. Otherwise, grace would no longer be grace. It would be meaningless. What he's saying is, I keep telling y'all, you can't work for this. Amen. This is a gift. It can't be a gift and uh, a paycheck. You, I'm not giving you a reward and paying you. This can't, the two can't be true about the same thing. This salvation that you can have is God extending his hand and giving it. It's not you said the right amount of um, prayers or you had the, the best lamb or all of the things that were required in the law. He said, I want you to, un I don't know. I said I was going to go back and count how many times Paul said in Romans that this is for grace. This is by grace. This is not works. This is by grace. But this is one of the things that we have to know that repetition is one of the best teachers. This is why he keeps repeating himself. The reason we will never forget our ABCs mm -hmm. is because we heard that song so much. I don't care that now Gracie's World on YouTube got a new way to sing it and this person got it. We know A to Z because we know our, now I know my ABCs. And Paul is trying to get them to know that this is not something that you can work for. This is is grace. Mm -hmm. If it was something you could work for, why would God need to have his hand out? Why would we need God to do anything, have anything to do with it? If I could work for it, I just would work for it and it would automatically come. But because there is grace, because this is God's giving it to me, because if we understand the truth of God and the way that the law was meant to show the failure of our our humanity, we wouldn't even get confused with that. And Paul wants them to get it so bad. He's like, I, I at the beginning of last, he was like, I, if I could just get y'all to understand, I want it so bad for you guys. <laughs> I want so bad for you to be free to understand that I just need to say yes. I just need to believe. I just need to accept so that otherwise grace wouldn't be grace. If I could give you something that you don't have to work for, but then you have to work for it, that's not grace. That There would be no grace. There would be no gift. There would be nothing for you to receive. You would have earned something. God said, so you can't earn this. There's not a way for you. There's nothing you could do. There's nothing you could not do in order to receive this salvation. Anybody have anything on six before we move to verse seven? <clears throat> Come on. I just wanted to say, and I know we already know this, it's just the works comes after you're saved. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, it's not, it's, there's no give or take about, like you say about, it's grace, it's free. And there's no give or take about, once you're saved, you're going to be about your father's business. Mm -hmm. And I and I and I know we don't be about it constantly, mm -hmm. as in witnessing. We should. Mm -hmm. We're not there yet, 
but we do do it. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. and if you love God and you're saved, the works are going to come. Mm -hmm. And then I wanted to say, like like God made uh, salvation a free gift. He could have made it where works yes. was it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the but the, mm -hmm. the only reason it's free is because God did it. Mm -hmm. God gave it free. Mm -hmm. So we let's not. God is sovereign. Mm -hmm. So he does it his way. Mm -hmm. And when he say, come, let us reason together, saith the Lord. That means this is the way that it is. Mm -hmm. I'm reasoning with you because I love you and because I want you saved. I want you to understand this is my way. Mm -hmm. And I'm giving you the choice mm -hmm. to get on board. Mm -hmm. And what God was sharing with me when I was studying is that grace is not only just a gift. It's an incentive. Yes. And that goes with, on with what mom was just saying. How when we receive um, this gift, it makes us want to do. Yes. Uh, it's something it's just like if you ever compliment a child or say they're doing yes. a good job. Oh, boy, what you do that for? Because <laughs> look at what I can do. Look at what I can do. It turns into I'm going to show you some more mm -hmm. and I'm going to show you some more because I like that you noticed that I did a good job. Mm -hmm. And so this is the, also the thing where God used the Gentiles to make the Israelites jealous. But how about God is using a little bit of grace to make us say, hey, I. I like I yes. like to get a little blessing. I yes. I appreciate that uh, what you did there, God. So let me show you. Let me show you what else I can do. I I can read. I can pray. I can press through. Yes. I can I can. And God said this. See, this is what I want. This is what what this is how He uses. This is why the Scripture talks about provoking each other to good work. Mm -hmm. This is how we do that. Yes. We tell somebody else. They see this is happening. What happened, child? I've been praying and fasting mm -hmm. and reading this word, child. Mm -hmm. I've been pushing in. I've been going when I didn't want to go. I've been praying and asking God and look at what God is doing. And then the person that's listening to you said, oh, I want some of that too. Mm -hmm. And so this is, this is God's way. He knows our humanity <laughs> better than us. And he knows what's going to make us get some act right about our life. He knows how to get us in order. And so this grace is not just a gift. It's, it's not just to receive it. It provokes us to want more of what God has to offer. Verse 7 says, what then shall we conclude? Israel failed to obtain what it sought, God's favor by obedience to the law. Only the elect, those chosen few, obtained it, while the rest of them became callously indifferent, blinded, hardened, and made insensible to it. This is, Paul says, so what are we supposed to understand? We're supposed to come to the conclusion, reach the conclusion that Israel was trying to do something to get something that wasn't going to work. Amen. We, we're supposed to see, okay, that wasn't working. Mm -hmm. We we love to talk about how, uh, you know, child, why are they still doing that? There's, there's a new way for that. You know, we got this now and we have this. Child, who going to the bank? Who got a checkbook? We don't do that anymore. We got these cards and we got this Venmo and PayPal mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. all this. <laughs> Google Wallet and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it was too some. It was, mom <laughs> says too much. We got all this, so we don't need the bank like that no more. So, this is what he. This is what we we see when we're watching others. Paul says, uh, "Only those who cho who were chosen obtained it, while the rest of them became callously indifferent." And and we talked about this before, but we're gonna talk about it again. God wasn't poking at people and saying, You gonna be a, you gonna be saved, you're gonna go to hell. Mm -hmm. You're gonna be saved, you gonna go to that's not what it means by chosen. It's he knew already who was going to receive. He knew already who was going to. And so the ones that weren't, they were they were hardened. We talked about Pharaoh um earlier in Romans. We talked we see the the people who Man, it seemed like it's y'all. You don't get this. You really want God after all these plagues. You really want to keep trying God. You really want to go back into captivity. You really want. And God said, "I know the condition of your heart." So those are the people who became indifferent. God, I look, I ain't gonna be doing all that. It, it, we, it, it. I'm just not. And there are people that we know that have been in a place that. We were like, man, they really turned away and said, God, I'm not going to do. That surprised us. Didn't surprise God. 
So those who got what God had, those chosen um, Israelites are the ones, the Jews, like Paul. God knew Paul was coming around. Mm -hmm. He knew that already. This was a surprise to Paul to be blind on the road to Damascus. God knew what day it was going to be <laughs> that he was ready to receive. He knew. And so this is what he's saying. We, only the elect could get what it was that God had for them. The only, the only way we're going to get what God has for us is if we do what he said do to get it. That's what that means. It's the same thing with our children. If we offer an allowance, the only way they're going to get it is if they do their chores, like we say. The only way they get X, Y, or Z, whatever um, reward uh, style you have, it's because they meet the qualifications. We... We can't then get mad and say, you rejected me. No, I didn't do what was necessary. We didn't get the raise at work, the promotion, the thing, and we know what, what was required. That is not on the boss. If we didn't do it, that's on us. And this is what we have to understand. That's what we are to conclude. Verse 8 says, as it is written, God gave them a spirit, an attitude of stupor, eyes that should not see and ears that should not hear, that has continued down to this very day. When I was studying, what it said was, God gave them an attitude of deadness to spiritual matters. They couldn't perceive. There's, as we know, this flesh is enmity against God. It can't understand. And if we're going to be obstinate and refuse to obey God, that ain't nothing but the flesh. And we know no good thing dwells in there. <laughs> we know that it don't ever want to do what God wants it to do because it's the enemy of God. So when it says that God gave them this spirit, God let them operate in it. Mm -hmm. You already have it. We already have it. We know how when we don't feel like doing what God say and God said, well, all right, <laughs> who finna bother you? When you get ready, I'll be over here because I'm not going to make you. This is, you have to choose. This is your free will. But since you're choosing at this point that you're not going to believe and that you're not going to accept, I'm going to let you have this attitude of deadness to spiritual matters. Go ahead on and be blind. Go ahead and have ears that can't hear. Go ahead and miss out on what this is that I have for you. This is a choice you're making. Because as we saw at the end of chapter 10, my arms are outstretched. If you push my hand away, how am I carry you? If you push the spoon away with the soup on it, you're going to be hungry. I can't make you. You keep turning your... You ever had a baby that just mouth closed and just... Mm -mm, will be hungry. God said that when you're ready, <laughs> when you're ready to stop fighting me and receive the gift, I can't make you take this gift. This is something that you have to want. So it says down to this very day. What does that mean? That in Paul's day, there were people, but hello, there are people to this very day, mm -hmm. people that we know ought to be like God has brought that God has been merciful to some people that we know. Mm -hmm. And for them to be in a place where they say, nah, I'm not serving it though. Mm -hmm. I don't want it. We're like, is that really what you do? You know, you don't know what you're doing. God said, not only do they know what they're doing, I'm going to let them do it. Mm -hmm. I want you to quit talking because, you know, sometimes God will just tell us, be quiet. Mm -hmm. Stop. Because they're not going to receive. They're not going to retain me in their knowledge. Any Anybody have anything on 7 and 8? Yeah, I wanted to hit that um, the end part of that 7 going into 8. Mm -hmm. Romans 1, verse 21 through 32, talk about how God responded. Mm -hmm. Not what God initiated. Mm -hmm. Right. He responded to these people to the point where the scriptures say, when they chose not yeah, to, to retain, retain. Mm -hmm. to retain God, mm -hmm. then He gave them over. Mm -hmm. Okay. And by Him being who He is, now this is the same God that chose these people now, mm -hmm. because He chose. He don't choose us just to get rid of us. Amen. He went through too much mm -hmm. to acquire us. Mm -hmm. He gave up blood, mm -hmm. the ultimate thing. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so he's not sitting around a corner waiting on me to lie, mm -hmm. to say, I got you. Amen. No, no, no. 
He done put up with this. Mm -hmm. They chose not to retain. When they knew the truth now, mm -hmm. they chose not to retain. Mm -hmm. So he responded and he gave them over. Mm -hmm. Okay? Then over in um, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, it, the same thing happened again. Okay? They are, he's responding again. And this time he said, he sent mm -hmm. strong. a strong delusion. Mm -hmm. Okay? He, he said, it's a result mm -hmm. of they what they was kept pressing him for. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they just mm -hmm. they just kept going and going. And 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 at some point, I know we mean well. We we want people to love God like we do. Mm -hmm. But at some point, we we we're gonna have to look and, and say, okay, now God, this looks like this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and, and and I ain't, and I can't go as far as to say if it looked like a duck, it quite like a duck. It's a duck. No, but at least I can say, God, this looks like this. Mm -hmm. what, what am I to do with mm -hmm. this? Do, do, mm -hmm. do I supposed to still try to talk to this? Amen. And it keeps coming back to mm -hmm. me, regardless of what scripture I pull, what how I say it in love. How I say it with authority. Mm -hmm. How I say the Lord said. Um, and it keeps coming back with a counteract. Is it that they just really can't grab it because of this? Mm -hmm. And, and it, it's, it's just there. And, and at some point, will, 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 they, will they turn? Mm -hmm. Um you, you know, it's it's one of those things, and and I and for us, we have to keep going forward until God say that's enough. Mm -hmm. And y'all, God will say, mm -hmm. just like He told Moses, mm -hmm. "Get up, mm -hmm. don't pray no more mm -hmm. for them." Mm -hmm. Okay, what He told. I think it was <laughs> Jeremiah. He told him, "Okay." Um, Stop praying mm -hmm. and go do something. Mm -hmm. You know, so at, at some point, God will tell you, okay, matter of fact, he said, Jesus said it. He said, now, if they don't accept this, the you, you just, um, you shake off the dust mm -hmm. and, and you go on. Mm -hmm. yes. So there are times that God will say, even in all of his love, mm -hmm. that it's time to move on. Mm -hmm. And this is where we have to remember and this is something that my husband told me a while ago. And he was like, Kim, if they not going to get saved for God, for God, mm -hmm. if they not going to serve God for God, you, there is nothing you can say. Again. If God hasn't convinced them, if they won't, you, there's nothing you can do. Mm -hmm. And I said, man, that was a hard, <laughs> a hard truth for me. But I was like, child, if they ain't listening to God, they sure ain't going to listen to me. So let me just be prayerful and do what it is that God tells me to do in this situation. But it really is an individual decision. Yeah, and let me say this before I we, before we move. Every instance where God told somebody to that that was it, man, they was they was in a place where they really felt for these people. They really mm -hmm. wanted better for mm -hmm. it. Hurt them yeah. to have to move forward. Mm -hmm. If we're in a situation and we like what well, God told me to leave him alone and and that and it don't hurt, mm -hmm. uh, you might want to check who told you to move on. Yes. Um, yeah. be, be, because you probably wanted to move on. Uh -huh. uh, and, 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 and you wanted their destination to be uh, <laughs> eternal separation from the Lord. Oh, so, Lord. So, so, so when the Lord tells us to move on, there yeah. ought to be some type yeah. of position that I've been in that man this this this, yeah. this hurts yeah verse 9 and 10 and David says oh yeah ma. and 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 God knows that if he say go back you'll go back mm. Mm -hmm. you know you 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 know mm -hmm. yeah 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 God knows <laughs> that's why we got to yield to him because we don't know because reprobate is different from yes, blaspheme. Yes, yes. So reprobate means I can come back. That's right. I, I've been given a, a chance. I've been turned over mm -hmm. to do those things that are convenient, convenient for me. me. But 
but I can turn. But mm-hmm. blaspheme against the, the Holy, Holy Ghost, Ghost. That's it, I, I can't turn. Yeah. And so, so, so these two instances that I pointed out in Romans one and twenty one and Second um, Thessalonians, I don't believe right. these are blaspheme against mm-hmm. the Holy right. Ghost. I believe these are rep- reprobate. reprobate. Mm-hmm. Right. Verse nine says, and David says. This is from Psalm 69, what David said. Let their table, their feasting or banqueting, become a snare and a trap, a fit, a pitfall, and a just retribution, retribution, rebounding like a boomerang upon them. Let their eyes be darkened and dimmed so they cannot see, and make them bend their back, stooping beneath their burden forever. This Psalm 69 um, that is being quoted is when David was talking about um, those who were his enemies. And he was saying this about the people. He, he was saying that basically those who are who are not chasing after what God wants, who would be disobedient to God, who would be the, the blessing that they should have. No, it's going to be a curse. Not not that God is uh, uh, turning a blessing into a cursing, but he's saying the way that you supposed to receive this blessing, the thing that is supposed to help, it's going to be a snare. Mm-hmm. Why? Because you're not even doing what you're supposed to do that's right. Uh, it's Psalm 69 verses 22 and 23 where he is um, saying this. He's saying that they're... The mercy that they could have received, they they won't be enjoying it in God. Is this this is just like where we talked? Was it last week where we talked about Jesus being a stumbling block? I don't remember which um, week it was, but how the fact that Jesus wasn't who they wanted them to wanted him to be became a stumbling block, so they couldn't even receive him. Mm-hmm. That this is what David was saying: the what you're supposed to get, what is supposed to bless you, how it's supposed to turn out. It's not going to be that way simply because you won't receive it the way that it was intended. We were talking about this at work today. You may have heard what I said wrong, but I said it right. You may get it messed up. They wanted Jesus to be what they wanted him to be. be, their, Their desire for Jesus became a stumbling block to who Jesus really was. And David is saying, listen, the, the feasting that you're doing, let it be a snare. Let it be a trap for you. Let you understand that it's not even going to be all that it that it could have been and what you thought it was going to be simply because you're not seeing what you're supposed to see. Your eyes are dim. Your back going to be stooped forever where you could have stood up and done what you were supposed to do, where the burden could have been lifted off of you. No, because you you're not going to receive because. As we just finished saying that God gave them this this attitude of deadness to spiritual matters, let them lead with that. Go ahead. What you think is going to be a blessing, you can't receive it as a blessing. You aren't going to be able to see it the way that it's supposed to be seen. What should have been a uh, you should have been able to carry well is going to burden you down because you're not doing it in the way that it's supposed to be done. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I was thinking about these verses. And this is David's request. Yes. Mm-hmm. This ain't God's concurrence. Con- yes. And, and yes, this is him saying, let them be. <laughs> it, and th- it's a difference because that verse 11, and I know you haven't got there yet. Yeah. It said, did God's people stumble, fall, stumble and fall beyond recovery? Right. And Paul comes back and says, of course all. not. Mm-hmm. So so David is using permanent words like forever. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> so, so this just letting us know that. Uh, you can this be you can be in God's will at one moment, mm-hmm. um, and, and then your emotions mm-hmm. and, and your frustration can start showing itself. And you may pray these things, but that don't necessarily mean God is going to agree with you mm-hmm. about His people. Right. And, and, and this is the thing that there, there's been a lot of pastors mm-hmm. that get frustrated with. Mm-hmm. with with, with the people and, and and they want God to do this and and, and God to do that and one said to me um, that um, all right preacher um, be careful before I, I pray to the Lord that 
that uh, that you don't get to marry Sister Washington, and, you know, and something re- rose up in me right then <laughs> that was like, you ain't got that kind of authority. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You, you ain't got that kind of authority yeah. to, to curse what God didn't bless. Yeah. So, so we have to be careful yes. as people of God to understand that, yes, I may feel justified. Mm-hmm. I may feel right in what I want God to do. Mm-hmm. But until God, until God do what I say, mm-hmm. it's just a request. Mm-hmm. It, and it could be a foolish one. It right. could be one that he said, don't answer because I prayed amiss. Mm-hmm. And so I, t- I, I try to encourage people of God, um, live right. Mm-hmm. If you live right, you got the favor of God just like mm-hmm. anybody else. And, mm-hmm. and so you ain't going to change God's <laughs> mind about me. Mm-hmm. Amen. Mm-hmm. Mommy had something. Yeah, I just, when I read... That, Witch or preacher. <laughs> Amen. I thought about Paul on the road, you know, when he was persecuting, um, killing the Christians. Paul's heart, he thought he was doing the right thing. Mm-hmm. He really thought he was doing the right thing. Mm-hmm. And there are some people... Like when when Pastor when he was praying, he was saying doing do the right thing for the right reason mm-hmm. at the right time, mm-hmm. all of that. And and when I thought when I read it, I thought about him and saying now when he when God told him where to go, you know they were afraid of him mm-hmm. because they knew what he was doing. Mm-hmm. But God ignored that because mm-hmm. he knew Paul. He knew. Uh, Saul's heart at the time. Mm-hmm. He, he was doing the right, the wrong thing for mm-hmm. the right reason, mm-hmm. and he knew if he met Jesus, mm-hmm. he would immediately mm-hmm. begin to do the right thing. Mm-hmm. And God, when He says He knows the the intent of our hearts mm-hmm. of, of each and every one of us, He knows. Mm-hmm. And how dare we pray against somebody else? Mm-hmm. We have to be careful, cause yes. there we go again, minding God's business. Minding God's business. He don't need no help. He knows. He sees and he knows. So does anybody have anything else before it is seven thirty two? So does anybody have anything else um, before we close out tonight? All right. If not, oh, go ahead, Miss Arthur. I'm sorry. No, I was gonna say that. Um... You know, if God was like us, you know, um, <laughs> the whole world would have been burned. Yes. Okay? But because God is not like us, mm-hmm. and he has his plan, regardless of what man says, God's plan always prevails. Mm-hmm. As long as we continue to be faithful, trust in his world, word, and continue to pray and continue that relationship with him, regardless of what man says. Because like uh, David said, David said, look, God, let your bountiful table be <laughs> becomes a snare. I mean, do this to them, do that, do that, right? Because he's frustrated. But God is patient. Mm-hmm. God, God has so much love that says love covers the multitude of sin. So regardless what we do, regardless what Israel, the Israelites do, God will have his hand stretched out for them. Mm-hmm. So because of his love. But it was if it was up to me and you, <laughs> yeah, would things be different. Shut the door. Look, <laughs> hey, uh, you don't want to accept, you don't want to believe. I right, you guys are done. Oh, y'all going to hell. <laughs> <laughs> you know. You know, that's that's how we are. You know, that's yeah. how humans are. But yeah. thank God, thank mm-hmm. God, God is not like us. Yes. We always got to strive and strive and strive to be like him. And it's difficult, but we are striving. Even in a relation, I always bring it to a relationship between a, a, a husband and a wife. Once you're able to master that, it's like Christ in the church. Mm-hmm. You know, if you are able, me and my wife was talking about something today and, uh, and I was, we were talking about how if you are able to, um, the way we respond to one another or how you, you care for somebody that you love, you know, we feel always, I have always have empathy for the people who are out there who ain't got the, the, the uh, less fortunate, don't have anything. And I feel like, you know, 
God has blessed me that I'm, I want to be able to reach those people. And, you know, her response was, well, you know, that is fine and dandy, but you got to start at home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, and it's the truth, you mm -hmm. know. Well, yeah, it's true. The way we respond to one another, the way we care for one another, you know, you have clothes, you have food on the table. But what the way I was trying to uh, what I was trying to get at was let's show love. We show love to one another, but let's show, extend that love outside our circle. You know, show love, not for a praise or for somebody to see that, oh, look at me, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. You know, in our world today, they do that for, for status, for followers and all that stuff, for Instagram posts and all that. But we're doing that because that's what God has implanted in us. This is what you feel in your heart that I want to do this to help somebody. Regardless of if you, your father who sees that in secret will reward you openly. Mm -hmm. You know, important. Mm -hmm. You know, but I, I, I'm just saying this to say that thank God, God is not us. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That's the perfect ending. Thank God he ain't like us because we would make a lot of permanent decisions and ruin a lot of things off a of temporary something. Mm -hmm. So I thank God that he knows our hearts and he can, he's long suffering with us in that way. Did you have anything you wanted to end with before? Yeah, just, just that in the New Living Translation, it started out verse nine with likewise. Mm -hmm. So it's a connection, it's an illustration, it's an explanation because Paul is in the midst of teaching mm -hmm. through this letter. Mm -hmm. He's comparing, okay, what Christ did, mm -hmm. understand, the, even David said. Mm -hmm. He's referencing people that that they can, that they know, that they can reference, that they have a connection with to help get them to better understand his, his point. Mm -hmm.